Hi guys, welcome to the another part of the cathedral build. Um, this time I'm gonna keep the intro short. Um, in this video we're going to make the doors, the gallery, the floor of the cathedral, the main floor of the cathedral. And we're gonna finish the outside somewhat, although there's still um, some work, some embellishments to do. So anyway, I'm Jagelsdorf and I hope you like the video. So we have ended the previous episode on me speckling the outside of the entire cathedral. And let's begin this one by finishing the tower, especially the top of it. I start with measuring and cutting a square to close the top of the tower that until this point was still open. And my first idea for the top of the tower was to take this round cylinder that I had lying around and use it to make a sort of a bell tower. And I wanted to top the whole thing off with this toffee plaster cast. But after I have put it together and looked at it from various sides, um, I decided that it looks kinda weird and more like something out of Middle Earth than out of Mordheim. I simply wasn't happy with it. So then came the redesign where I thought that it would be nice to be able to put the miniatures on the top after all. So I just cut some granulations. First I cut a strip and then just with a scissor cut it into four pieces of the same length. I freehanded a granulation that I thought would look nice. And then after some additional measuring I just cut it with a knife and a scissor. One ready, three more to go. And because they are all the same size I have to bevel the edges at roughly 45 degree angle so that they fit together nicely on top. And I just glue them to the top of the tower with hot glue and then reinforce them with some PVA on places where the pieces meet each other. And then I thought it would be a perfect occasion to finally use a random tool that I randomly bought, a picture frame clamp. The left tower for now I've just closed off with a piece of cardboard and next I want to finally take care of the floor. As I said before, I will want it to be made out of marble or some other kind of stone that I'll try to paint on. So I'll be cutting these stone tiles out of cardboard. First I cut some 1 cm wide strips and I will be cutting them down to 2 cm long tiles. Before gluing I try to clean up the edge of the inside of the cathedral a bit then apply some PVA glue and simply place them down the shiny side up. First I'm gluing the border around the entire floor. And after that is ready I'm cutting some 2 by 2 cm squares for my checkered floor in the naves. Again it's nothing special, just cutting them into roughly samey pieces and gluing them down. And again I'm not really paying attention to them being perfectly square or perfectly the same because it's more time after all, it's a ruined cathedral so it doesn't very matter. And for the main walkway I wanted to have somewhat larger tiles so they are I think like 3x3 three three or something like that. The exact size isn't really important. So the top of the tower has bonded so I decided to do some speckling again. I covered the top of the tower and I started doing the inside because the floor is already in and sadly I have run out out of my favorite brand of speckling compound. And had to buy inferior nippleless one. Ay, 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 ay. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. While the speckle was drying I decided to do some sculpting. I thought that it would be the right time to make the graves at the entrance. So I used my commercial paper mache 
and made some flat rectangles uh, out of it and with a toothpick tried to sculpt some random dates and things into them. With the graves and the floor basically done, I decided to continue on other details like the main gate. For that I just used the MDF cutout as a pattern, roughed it a little bit with a wire brush and my knife. I always dry fit if the stuff fits together. I carved the planks with my knife and I've noticed that it started getting dull, so I bought new expensive blades. Sigmar bless them. I hope they last longer than the old ones. Anyway, I wanted my door to be reinforced with metal. Again, inspired by many old renaissance and generally many old churches. So I just cut many cardboard strips glue them down on both sides of the gate and then cut them to size. And this is how it looks right now. You can see that it's a door but it definitely needs more work. I'll be using some washers that I found in my tool chest as handles for the door. They need a little bit of straightening, but it is easily done. I'm gluing them with some super glue and then sculpting the thing that holds the handle <laughs> with uh, some paper mache. Then I wanted to make some studs, so I have found some slightly thicker cardboard and cut it into tiny squares, about 2 by 2 millimeters or 3 by 3 millimeters. In the beginning I measured it a little bit, but after that I just simply went by eye and because I needed like a hundred of them. Okay, maybe not a hundred, but like a dozen or two dozen. Jesus. Or Sigma, sorry. At first I tried gluing them with super glue, but after that I decided that PVA is good enough and even better because it gives me some room to uh, move uh, the studs around and make them sit where I want to. And I tried to line them up with the planks that I carved before so that the whole things make sense. Even though it is maybe a little bit infuriating that the handle doesn't line up nicely with the studs, but oh well, I should have to thought about it earlier. Now, because I want the door to be opened, I'm going to cut it apart. But you could leave it like it is if you want to have the door closed. But these two halves give me a little bit of flexibility. But it seems that I have forgotten about something. Oh yeah, the back side of the door. Uh, that's like another 10 hours of work. Uh. Well, finishing the backside of the door isn't so important right now. Um, let's take care of the top of the tower. I will be making it out of balsa as well. So I'm first, of course, measuring out how much I'm going to need. Not that it changes anything. <laughs> I will be fitting the balsa wood floor on the fly anyway, as always. So maybe I shouldn't measure so much after all. <laughs> I'm trying to give a piece of balsa some texture with a wire brush but I think my wire brush isn't really that good and um, so I will be giving it more texture with a tip of the knife afterwards. Anyway I'm covering in the planks just as before and then doing some smaller planks so that it looks like a board flooring and you can do like a fancy pattern on something but I am just cutting every second board in half and then the other ones in free. And then of course, as I fit the whole thing, it doesn't fit and it breaks. So I have to cut it down, carve it a little bit, make it fit, use a lot of glue. <sighs> Why do I even bother? Measuring is really <laughs> overrated after all. <laughs> 
and I was a little bit worried that this place would be overpowered for game purposes because I thought that maybe just one model will fit there but as you see there's clearly enough place for four regular models but the tower needed an entrance hatch so I found some balsa veneer that I had lying around it's really really thin like half a millimeter or something like that I tried carving it like before but it really just fell apart so I basically cut it into planks and then glued back together with another strip of balsa wood or two strips basically making a hatch from scratch not carving it in a piece of balsa wood and again you don't need to use balsa wood for stuff like that you can use basically anything you could use popsicle sticks you could use matchsticks, but balsa is nice and I have it and this isn't supposed to be a tutorial but me trying to do something fancy, so yeah, whatever. And for the handle I use the same washer as on the main door and lower it carefully onto my tower. Now there's one more detail that I wanted to add and it's the hinge. And you can make a hinge fairly easily with a cotton swab. I happen to have the kind with a paper handle, not a plastic handle, so I have simply cut it to size, then split it in half and then carved my hinge into it simply by rolling my knife around. And it looks pretty convincing in my opinion. I simply glue it in with some PVA and I'm sure after it's all painted it will blend nicely with the rest of the hatch. Yeah, and as you see, I've glued the hatch in perpendicular to the boards of the floor just to accentuate it a little bit more. And I also covered the inside of the crenellations with spackle to give them some texture. So at this point, the entire cathedral is covered in spackle and it looks awful. <laughs> this is the point where you think, oh my god, what am I doing? Is this the right thing? Should I just throw it into the trash? But I hoped that sending it down will be the step that turns it all around and makes it look great. And it was. It really changed everything. Because the way I did it with the uneven cover of spackle, after sending it down you still have some recesses and some weird places where it doesn't quite look smooth. And I used 120 grit sandpaper, so it isn't perfectly smooth, there are some grooves from it and it really gives it character, it re looks really great, you will see on the close-ups soon. But I'm really, really happy with how it came out. And I didn't sand all of it on the inside because all the dust would kill me. Anyway, there are still some places, some little gaps to fill, but yeah, the texture is awesome. And there is a little happy accident that happened. The cardboard warped a little bit from the moisture of the speckling compound. And after sanding the whole thing down, the cardboard shows a little bit in some places. And it kind of looks like a brick texture. So yeah, I think it's a happy accident and I hope it looks good after uh, I paint it. Anyway, with the walls smooth, I finally could start with making my gallery. And I decided to make just a simple wooden gallery on wooden supports. Um, so I measured everything first and cut about like 9 centimeter long beams um, from what I recall. And sadly I don't have like strips of balsa and only have this um, board and it's 3 millimeters thick, which was a little thin for me. And so I decided to cut two 6 millimeter strips, glue them together and end up with a 6 millimeter beam or twice the size that it would normally be. And I repeated it a few times to have extra supports for my gallery. Although in this video we'll only be making the front of the gallery, there will also be two additional parts that go on the sides. And as I said, I make like six or eight of these beams. I don't think I'm gonna use all of them, but I'd rather have more than not enough. And also at this point I have realized that I didn't make my entrances to the towers yet. 
and it would be extremely annoying to glue them in after the gallery is there so I decided to take care of it right now. I simply make the doors with the same technique as the large gate before only in smaller scale so I won't be showing you the whole process over here. Had I been a smart man I would have done it before speckling the inside it would make my job even easier but I'm not a smart man so I had to rescue it somehow at first I wanted to carve some nice stones around the door but it was really annoying to work in this tight space and so I've simply opted for using more spackle and simply kind of smoothing it in blending it all together so it doesn't stick out too much Anyway, by the time I'm done with the doors, my beams are glued together and dry, so I can clean them up a little bit, make the sides a little bit uniform, and I also carve the edges somewhat to give it this rough, rustic, hand-hewn look. You know, the, this type of look that looks really nice dry brushed. <laughs> With the main beams ready, I decided to take care of the body of the main floor of the gallery. I've simply cut a piece of balsa wood as broad as my board is, fitted it in, checked if the height is okay, and then started carving. And again, this is basically the same thing as with the top of the tower before only on a slightly larger scale and this time I didn't forget about making both sides. The supports I glue in and pin in with some pins. Simply try to line them up with the edge of your gallery. I will probably be working on it a little bit more afterwards. Balsa wood is really soft so um, you can easily pin it with a regular pin. And I'm also trying to support them a little bit as they're drying so that they dry straight. Now making the whole thing was a little bit problematic. I struggled a little bit. There are a, There is a lot of material that I've left out because it was really unproductive. In the end I opted for simple supports that go at 45 degree angle. Um, but before I do them on both sides I decided to add some additional beams that would logically hold the whole floor up. These are the beams that are holding the boards of the gallery. And I pin everything and then add some supports at 45 angle that I will also pin so that they hold nicely in place. Then I only need to cut my floor beams to size and try if everything fits. And it does. Here's a little overview of the current progress. Here we have the gallery, the doors, the graves, the floor, um, everything nicely sanded down and it starts to look like something. And now for some embellishment. Here are all the guys that we have sculpted and cast in the last video. They still need a little bit of touch up Basically, I'm cutting off the flaring on them and then taking a bit from the backside of them so that they are all of roughly even thickness. And of course, first I'm dry fitting the sculptures looking where they will look nice. And some of them I'm also cutting up a little bit partially because there are some bubbles that don't look so nice um, and I'm trying to hide them but also logically they would be destroyed in the city of Mordheim. And on the back of all these things I'm cutting some retention grooves so that the hot glue that I'm gluing them in with is going to hold better. Also after the hot glue uh, has cooled down a little bit I will be putting some PVA glue around them just to give it this, this second layer of support. And yeah, that will be it for now. That's how it looks like. It presents itself really nicely, I think. It's already got this, this grandiose feeling. I need to do uh, the rest of the gallery, few broken windows, the back of the door. 
yeah, and then the roof. Oh, yeah, I have forgotten about the roof. Okay, the roof is a, a little bit of a bigger thing. But I think the roof can be a separate episode, really. I don't know, it's, it's kind of getting out of hand. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really happy with the progress. I'm really happy with the video. And there's still very, very much to do. Um, but it's coming along, it's coming along. And I definitely had a little bit of a crisis of faith in this time. You know, there are these three typical stages of making any piece of terrain. Um, first, where you have the idea and think, oh, how awesome it's going to be. Then you start doing it and you kind of hate it and doubt yourself and think it's not going to work. And then at some point, there's a complete um, 180 turn where you think, wow, this, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. And yeah, I think I'm somewhere in between the second and third stage at the moment. And yeah, in part three will be definitely... I hope that we'll be finishing the cathedral in part three. Um, at least what's already there. The roof may warrant a part on itself, but we'll see. We'll see how, how fast I am and how long the videos take. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.